Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Monday, January 3rd, with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Lo, to us the Christ is born. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lo to us, the Christ is born. O come, let us worship him. All right, today we've got Luke 2, verses 21 through 40. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to, prepare, to present him to the Lord. As it is written in, an all, in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into his temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to, for the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was eighty-four. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer day and night. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak, it to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Israel. Redemption of Jerusalem, sorry. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. When the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. So, we just had this text last Sunday for, um, for our gospel, and uh, that means tomorrow is going to be the text we just had um, yesterday, which I just preached on. So, um, anyway, so this text we've got um, just briefly covering that Jesus was circumcised on the eighth, uh, eighth day, uh, and we've already covered that, how Christ bled for us um, in his circumcision, um, and so that's covered ground already. So we've got, um, really, the, the main focus is the this encounter with uh, Simeon at the temple. <clears throat> now, we do have this part where they were doing it to, um, this is part of Mary's purification ritual, uh, and, and it involves the uh, the first male to open the womb um, is set, up, set aside for God. Um, the idea is that this is, is kind of like the first fruits of the womb, the first fruits um, the, the male first fruits of the womb is dedicated to God. So they would give this child over to, to serve God, to, to, to serve in, in the temple and, and to uh, be dedicated to God in that, in that way. But God gave the option to redeem the child so that um, they might purchase him back uh, for a sacrifice. And the, uh, the fact that they gave two turtle doves or two young pigeons indicates that they were poor, that they were not uh, well off. Uh, this was, if you uh, could uh, afford a, uh, to sacrifice a sheep or something, that was great. Um, if you couldn't, turtle doves, pigeons would do. If you couldn't even afford that, then an offering of flour would be acceptable. Basically, it wasn't really 
what the offering was so much so as an offering was made, a sacrifice was was made. And of course we see how this this all ties into you know the whole salvation history, the plan of salvation, in which um, you know the, the the first the first fruits of, of the womb, the firstborn child, um, in this case the male child, is is offered up to God, is given over to God, <coughs> but he is um, he is able to accept a a sacrifice which would return the child to you. Um, so you know God would not offer it in exchange for his child. He he gave up his son, his firstborn son, um, the first fruits of our uh, of the resurrection, um, gave up Jesus for us um, so that we would be saved. Uh, so there's a lot of connection there, which is giving up the firstborn, um, dedicating to God, and um, offering a sacrifice to redeem. You know, And of course, Jesus is a sacrifice that redeems us. So there's a lot of really fun little connections going on there. But uh, the, the main part is, is Simeon and the song that he sings. Is he sees Jesus, takes him up into his arms, and has this song that we sing pretty much at the end of, of just about all of our services. Um, well, except setting, setting one and two, we sing Thank the Lord. Setting three and four, we sing uh, the Nuc Dimittis, which is um, Latin for uh, now, now you let us depart. Which is what Simeon says, Lord, you are now letting your servant depart in peace. So we sing this song at the end of the service, and I've, I've preached on this before, I, I teach this whenever this comes up, and that is, it's a, it's a neat song to end the service on, because it sounds like it is a just departing church song. You know, Lord, you're letting your servant depart in peace. We are leaving church. It's the end of church. So we are departing in peace, because according to his word, our eyes have seen the salvation uh, that he has prepared in the presence of all peoples. We've seen the blood and uh, the body and blood of Christ on that altar. We've received it. We have experienced and and, and uh, been in his presence in this service. And now we are ready to depart in peace, to, to go home and, and have lunch. Except that, um, given the context here, that Simeon was waiting. He was given a, a word from, from God that said he would not ta- see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So we we don't we don't actually the the text doesn't come out and outright say Simeon was waiting to die like he is he's just been kicking around kicking around kicking around he's like when how long Lord because I'm I'm ready I'm old and I'm ready to go um, you know it, it really doesn't even um, he doesn't tell us that he was an old man he was just righteous and devout but um, the little detail that um, that he was given this word of saying he wouldn't see death until he beheld the Christ. That seems to indicate the, the meaning, the, the deeper meaning of his, his song here is, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. Not just that he can leave the temple, that he can go home and not come back be, or doesn't have to be there every day looking for the Christ, but he is now letting him depart this world. He, not that, that God is granting him an immediate death or anything like that, but um, now he can die. You know, he, he's received the word that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Christ. He has seen the Lord's Christ now in Jesus, and so he is. God has now said, "Okay, you may depart in peace. You may, you may die now." <laughs> now that's not to say he he just went out and died right then and there. Um, we don't know how long he lived afterwards. But the idea is that he was now prepared to die. Um, having seen Jesus, how, having encountered him, having be, beheld, uh, beheld, yeah, beheld, um, the Son of God in his arms, um, he knew that everything was fine now. Everything was good. He could die now. He could die happy and content because he had seen the consolation of Israel. He had seen the glory of God sent to his people. And so that means when we're worshiping and at the end of the service, we sing the song, we're effectively saying, hey, we're ready to die. Like, okay, we're well, going to walk out these doors. And if we, if we meet our demise at the out, uh, outside these doors, we're ready. We're prepared. Uh, we, we've seen Christ. We know what's waiting on the other side, and we are not afraid. Um, that is the, the beauty of the song. It is a song that says, no matter what the world throws at me after I leave this, these doors, I'm ready. I can face it. I'm prepared because I've seen Christ. I've received him. 
um, I'm ready. And so it's it's kind of a, <laughs> a neat little uh, deeper meaning there. So if you've ever just kind of thought like, oh, it's, yeah, now we can go home. It's like, well, <laughs> it means a little bit more than that. Um, but it is a nice comforting kind of idea um, and act, proclamation, really, that, uh, okay, we can face anything. We aren't afraid of, of death, the worst thing that could possibly happen, um, because it's not no longer... It is no longer the worst thing, you know, because there is no worst thing in Christ. <laughs> uh, he, he saves us. He brings us to himself. So death just means an end to this momentary brief existence in this world and the beginning of eternal life, the beginning of our time in heaven waiting for the resurrection and then the resurrection, which brings us to life for all time. So um, we are ready. We're prepared. This is a, a song that says, all right. We're good to go. We, we're, we're not afraid. We face life unafraid and, and, and good to go. And all right, let's do this. So fun text. Good. Hey, good text for the beginning of the year. So good stuff. All right, let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power. And grant this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, blessings to you on this uh, Monday, the first full week of the new year. Um, hope hope everything goes well for you today and, and everything starts off this year well. Um, and uh, just hope it's a, it's a great one. So, until tomorrow, peace be with you.